Welcome back everyone, it's Chris and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a user settings screen such that we can persist a user's preferred currency and then make sure it reflects everywhere across the app. So what we're going to do now is we are going to be able to like use this JSON file then we are going to pass it into a JSON array that we can pass to our HTML of which we can always like change just so we give a user more flexibility on which currency they use so at this point we're going to keep it simple so we're going to be able to persist it and then make it reflect everywhere in the app for example if i change if i come in here and i change this to like usd usd okay so if i change this to usd you can see that changes are saved and then when i go like here you can see that it reflects there and then right here it will reflect everywhere so it's on the basis of this that you can build a feature like currency exchange such that when a user changes like the currency, you can convert all their money to the new currency. The app can always keep updated. But in this one, we are going to only focus on making sure we can persist the user's currency. So we'll be able to learn about like reading from files and then I will show you the best practices when it comes to working with files in Python. Also, I'll show you how to work with uh, like this select list and then to make sure you can keep the, pre the previous saved value in there even when a user goes away and comes through so it's going to be interesting so let's go ahead and get started so right here i'm going to start the task so i'm going to now come to my app first thing we're going to need to start with is to create an app that will manage the user's preferences or the user settings so right here i'm going to create an app using python manage.py start app then I'm going to call it user preferences. Okay, so once you have that, it's going to create a new app. You can see it here. So first things first, we have to register it in our app settings by app section. So right here, you have to register it. It's called user preferences. Okay, so now that you have the app, but and by the way, guys, the name that you use is usually here in the apps apps.py so just using this will just do the work for you so once we have that we need to now set up our model just so we can save that data in a db so right here i'm going to set up a new class so class going to call it user preference then we are going to inherit from models to model of course and then we are going to need to set up two properties on this on this instance so one of them is going to be the user for whom we are going to be saving the settings for so this user is going to be we're going to create like a relationship between this preferences model and then the user so right here i'm going to to create this relationship so models it's going to be a one-to-one -one field because we want like a preference to belong to one user and each user to have one set of preferences so right here first thing we are going to create this relationship the first thing we do is pass in the two so the two refers to the model that we want to link with of course we need to import it from here so from django.contrib.auth since we are using the built-in auth model so from auth.models import user so if you have like a custom model that you wrote and then you, you want to link it here of course you will import it normally like you would so same thing we are doing here for the built-in one so the next thing we pass in is what happens when a user like deletes let's say a user deletes their account what happens when to the preferences so for the most part you're going to want to like clear them out but we have a variety of options that we can do you can add this on delete so on delete you specify what happens when like a user is deleted so if you want to like when a user is deleted to clear out the user preferences then you can do models dot cascade so this will delete like the, the preference to that belong to that user you can actually decide to do nothing or you can say it now so depending on your use case but for now we are going to just delete it if a user is deleted and then the next thing we are going to do of course is save the currency for now but you can add more details here for example if you have other details about the user for example if they are allowing us to send them like reminder emails you can add it there so this is going to be, I'm going to call it a chart field. So this, of course, we need to give it a max length. I'm going to set it to 55 and then we need to give it a, 
so blank yeah so it can be blank fine because normally a user on sign up won't have it okay or oh, it can be null so let me bring it in here so once we have that we just need to make sure everything is written correctly which i think it is let's define a to string method so to define a to string method so you just define it and str and then we are going to return this string so we are going to return let me bring in we are going to return the user so you know the user the user string method returns the username so i'm going to return the user then i'm going to like add like s then preferences okay so it can help us like to see this in, in more detail when we are like in the django admin which i will show you guys actually coming up so once we have this we have to migrate it so that it's it's added to our tables or relations actually those can be used interchangeably so now once we have that we can now make run migrations make migrations can see that the migration is created then we need to migrate it so run migrate and then everything is good so once we have this now we need to set up the links to now we need to set up what the links to go to the settings page so for us to do that we are going to now go to the templates folder and then we are going to create a, a file called index.html but it's going to go in preferences then i'm going to call it index.html okay so now here we need to import to inherit from our base model which you can do by doing extends extends then our template is called our template is called you guessed it base.html which will give us the other parts of the page that are and include for us the CSS and everything. So base.html. Okay, so once we have that, now we need to bring in our block content so that we can add our content in the middle and it reflects. So block content the format is playing games nowadays. Okay, so once we have this. Then of course we need to end block. Okay. So right here in the middle now we can add our settings. So let me add an H1, actually an H5, and put like preferred currency. Preferred currency. And then down, I'm going to add an HR just to separate because normally you're going to be having more than one. Then you are going to add a select list. I want to use a bootstrap one, but let's first see that you can make it work. So once we have this, now we need to link to this, which you can do in our base.html. So right here in our base.html, you can see that we include the sidebar, which has those sidebar navigation links. So in partials, you can go to the sidebar, and then right here, we need to add our links. So I'm going to copy this H6 up to where the UR ends. And then down, I'm going to now change this to be settings. And then here, the first one is going to link to like general settings. So general settings can contain things like um, the currencies. But then we're also going to have like account settings so that the user can like manage their profile and also delete the account if they ever want to. Those kinds of settings for just for grouping purposes. So right here, this is going to go to URL, and then we want to go to a URL which will have a view which will have a name. How will you call it? Okay, let's call it preferences. Okay, fine. So once we have this, now of course we need to set up our view and our URLs. So right here, I'm going to create a view. So I'm going to use a function of view here, and for the most of the remaining parts, we're going to be using function of views because in our authentication app, we used a lot of class-based views. So I just want to show you like both worlds such that you can choose what works for you great. So right here, I'm going to create a function view. So I'm going to create index. So right here, you know, it takes in a request. 
because of course we want to be able to work with the request response model thing. So right here, I'm going to render a template, so return, render, so first thing is the request, and then what are we rendering? We are rendering something in user preferences. So if you look at our template, it's actually about preferences. So preferences slash index.html. Okay, so let's set up our URL to handle this, this view. So right here, I'm going to create another file and call it urls.py, which is something I think we've done before urls.py so here we need the urls pattern url patterns so url patterns it's going to be a list so this list is going to contain a path so this is going to be just the default path in our preferences namespace which we are going to hook up in the url main app urls later so this is going to link to views dot index and of course we need to give it a name so name is going to be so the name we put here is the name that we have to use to to like refer it in the in the template so right here here it has to be the same make sure it's the same and once you have that actually I should be preferences okay so right here once you have everything set up we need to import views and path so from dot import views So we also need to import path, which you can do by from import, importing it from the URLs. So from django.urls import path. Okay, so we are done here. Now we want to hook up these URLs to our main app. So in settings.py in URLs.py of the main app, we are going to like let me duplicate this, then this is going to go to preferences. And then we are loading in the apps user preferences. Okay, so what this means is when a user goes to slash preferences, we want to render all the we want now to look at the URLs in the user preferences app. So that would mean it will come and look here. So right here, it will come and see okay, what's default? It's preferences. So what's what's views.index? What does it contain? And then it's going to basically run what's here. So let's check it out and see how it's going. So Python manage it py run server. So guys, if you ever want to run your web server on another port, you can just pass the pass the port as the second parameter. For example, I'm going to pass in for the 200. Okay, so once you pass in that, you see now it's running on port for the 200. So now if we go there, we need to log in. So let me log in. You can see that we are logged in. We have our our links added. So when I click general, you can see that we go to preferred currency. So right here now we want to set up our select input. So I'm going to go to getbootstrap.com, and then I'm going to scroll to input groups. Okay, so basically we want something like this, where user can come and choose, and then they can save. So we are going to use to just build on to this last one. So I'm going to copy this. So now in the in our in our template, which should be here. Oh, where is it? Index of HTML. So which is here? So I'm going to bring everything here into a container. Just so we can get some margin on top. So I'm going to bring in a our select then this one should go in of course right here let me just put more margin on top so empty three so these are going to need to be dynamic so how do we get them so first thing first thing first thing we're going to need to do is come and get this file so i'm going to download it from here i'll leave a link to download it in the description okay so once it's downloaded now we need to move it in into our our main projects folder. So right here, 
I'm going to minimize this just so I can just drag it over. So bring it in. Okay, so right now you see that we have brought it in our main application. So right now we can refer to it. Okay, so how do we populate this? What is it? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to reload here. So how do we populate it with our currencies? So right now, if we look at these currencies, you notice that they are just a JSON object. So we need a way to pass it into a Python dictionary that then we can like turn it in, turn into an array that we can render in this select list. Okay, so to do that, we are going to go to our views.py, which is here. So to do that, we are going to create our final array. So I'm going to call it a currency data. I'm going to initialize this to I'm going to initialize it to an empty list. And then we are going to use the OS module to basically look at the files in the file system. So import OS. Then also I'm going to import JSON because we want to work with JSON and manipulate it to be like Python objects that we can work with beta. So right here for us to, to read this file, we are going to need a path to it. And the easiest way to get a path to it, to it if you can look at our settings with py, you can see that we already have the base directory. So this base directory basically means the, the, the parent folder of our project. So now what we need to do is find a way of looking at the parent, parent folder of our project and then look at this file currencies.json as next. So for us to do that, let's come back to our views. So right here, I'm going to create a variable called file path. So file path. So this is going to be equal to, we are going to use the other variable for base share in the settings. So I'm going to import settings here. So from, from django.conf, import settings. Okay, so once we have that, now we can do settings. Actually, we are going to need to just do os.path.join, join, not js, join. So what this does is it takes in like two things. One will be the folder we want and then the file we want to join to and then it's going to return for us an absolute URL to that file which we can use as the file path. So right here, first thing we're going to do settings base URL. So we want to now, we want to join the base URL and then the file called currencies.json. So this is going to, this should be giving us the the absolute URL to it. So currencies dot JSON. Okay, so right here, I'm going to introduce you guys to something called the Python debugger. So right here, if you do PDB, so you import PDB, then you run PDB set trace. So when a program runs up to here, it's going to pause, and now we can check what's in this variable. So right here, I'm going to go back to the application and then reload. Oh, we are not getting here. That's because we imported it. Let's see, settings, base URL. It should be base there. Sorry about that, guys. So base there. Okay, so reload. Now you can see it's not actually giving us the HTML, and that's because it's paused in the debugger. So right here, we can look at the file path. So now you see it's an absolute URL to the file. Okay, so which is good, which is what you want. So before we continue, you can actually look at all these other details. So for example, you can look at the day, any other variable up here. I will possibly make a, a tutorial about how to debug in Python. So let's continue. So for us to, cont to continue the program, you can run C and then it will continue, but I'm going to comment it out for now. Okay, so now that we have the file, we want to get the data from it. So one of the utilities that we can use is this function called open. Okay, so what, what open does is it takes in a file and then the, the mode that we're opening it for. So if you're opening it to read from it, you pass R, W for, for writing. If you want to write to it, you pass W. If you want to add something to it, you pass A, which stands for append. But for us, we are basically doing <laughs> reading, you guessed it. So 
for us to read i'm going to use something called the context manager way and what this does is it basically allows us to access files like in a more efficient way and we actually don't have to worry about things like closing the files it will do that like on its own so pass open then we need to pass the file path so pass that then the next will be the mode we are opening it for so for us we are opening it to read it and by default it's actually read guys but if you ever need to open open to read it you pass like w or a for us of course we want to to read and it's actually the default one so you may as well like disregard it but i'll keep it just to have it in there so then we need to save the contents in uh, in a variable so with this context manager syntax the variable will be on the left so now in here we can do everything we want so first thing we are going to need to do here i'm going to add a pdb so i'm going to move it in here so that we can look at the json file and i'll show you the differences that we will go through to transform it into a json array so right now when we reload here and then we look at the json file okay you can see that it's, it's just a file it's just a file so how do we turn it into something we can read so for us to do that we are going to use a json utility called load so i'm going to create here a variable called data and then i'm going to do json load and then we are going to bring in this, this file of ours okay so this if we now run again and then check data you will see that now this is a python dictionary okay so now we are moving closely so right here now we want to create an array and then update this so we can do it easily by doing a loop on the data so i'm going to since it's a dictionary we want to use the key and value so for kv in in what in data dot items so those are the values right here so once you do that then now we can append data now we can append each object in here in a format that we are going to easily access so we can do current data dot append and then we are going to append an object so this this object is going to contain a name which now in the name will be the key and then it's going to contain a value for which now the value will be the v okay so once this is done now we can run our program but i want to move this one outside just so we can be able to investigate the currency data after we've added from it and like i mentioned guys you really don't need to do come and say like json file.close anywhere this is taken care of for you if you use this syntax unless you're you're not using this context manager syntax so once that's there now we can check our app so i want to check what's in currency data so by default you see it's empty but now you can see we have an a list okay so this this now we are going to pass it into our view and then we see how to display it in our select okay so for us to do that you know we have here in our render we can pass another context argument as the next one here so we can actually do like currencies going to do it here so currencies this is going to be equal to currency data okay so once that is there now we can go in our in our template which is here and instead of us displaying this then we are going to need to look through the the currencies that we sent so here i'm going to use i'm going to do a for loop so for currency in currencies so this will be this needs to match with how you send how you send it in the in the template so right here it needs to match with this make sure it's the same so going back to our template so now we need to of course end for so end for okay 
So right here, inside here, now we can show an option. So I'm going to copy this. And then inside here, I can now, instead of us showing that choose all, we can display like the value, but I want us to actually display the name and value. So right here, I'm going to show currency.name and then I'm going to put this dash. Then now we can show the value. Okay, so this should be currency dot value. Okay, so once we have that, now we can look at it. So in the browser, run again. So now you can see we have the Zimbabwe dollar selected already. But then you can see that now we have all the currencies in there. So yeah, which is good, which is what we want. So how about we start working on saving a user's currency? Okay, so for us to save, I'm going to come back to our, to our HTML. I'm going to, for us to save now, I'm going to come back to our HTML and I'm going to now add a form. So this is all going to go in a form. So this is going to make a post request. Uh, sorry about that, so form, not actually dot. So form, post request. So we are going to post the same URL. So here I'm going to use URL. Then now we need to post to, to preferences. Okay, so once we have that, now we need to of course close the form. So that should be here. So I'm going to change this button to be an submit, to have an input type submit. Then of course we need a value. So the value is going to be safe. Okay, so then I remove this and close here. Now we need to also add the our cross site request for the token, which we can do from by doing scrf underscore token. Okay, so once we have that, now we can we are going to need to handle the post request that we send from the this form. So in our view, right here, we need to find to detect when a user is making a post request. So for us to do that, we can do if request dot method. First, we are going to check for a get. And you already know what it is. So if it's get, then if we want to run what we are running, then else. Else, then that means it's a post and then we can run it here. Okay, so first things first, we're going to need to pick the the chosen currency. So here I'm going to make currency equals request dot post and then I'm going to add currency. Okay, so once we have it, once we have it, now we are going to need to save it. So for us to save it, we are going to now, right here, I'm going to query for the user's previous preferences, which are, we are going to need to import the model. So from dot models, import user preference. Okay, so right here, I'm going to define user preferences This is going to equal to user preferences with objects with get. So we want to get all the preferences for this user. So to get them, we are going to pass user equals request and the request object, you can access who the user is. Okay, so now once we have that, now right here we can do user preferences dot currency equals our new currency. Okay, so once that's done, then we can tell you that, okay, we've saved your new currency by doing our messages. So messages, dot, this is going to be a success one. Then the first one is a request. Then now we can say changes, saved. 
Okay, so we need to import the messages and of course we need to add the messages partial to our template. So from Django, contrib, import messages. Okay, so going back to our template, here we need to import our, we need to bring in our messaging. So right here, we need to include, I'm sure it's called partial, partials slash underscore messages with HTML. Okay, so once we bring in that, let's test and see what we have. Possibly we are still on the right track. Okay, so once we reload, we actually have an error. Okay, so what's happening is, by default, it's trying to gate, to use gate for, to get the user's preferences. And right now the user has no preferences. So that's why it's, it's, it's failing. So if you come back to the view, one way we can solve the issue here is to actually check if it already exists. Like if a user already has it, then we can like do, actually here we're supposed to do user's preferences save. But otherwise, if a user doesn't have it, then we can create it instead. Okay, so for us to do that, for us to do that, I'm going to first like check if, if this exists. Okay, so right here, I'm going to check exists. I'm going to make a function called exists. So exists, actually I'm going to make a property. So exists now will be this. I'm going to call exists. And then this exists on the filter. Okay, so once we have this, then we can now check here. Once we have this exist, we can now set this only when, only when like this, we can now like set it to this when it already exists. So right here, I'm going to first set it to like none. Okay, so right here, I'm going to check if exists, then preferences will now So user preferences will now equal to this. So this will help us to not the app not to crash. So this means that now if it doesn't exist, so right here, right here we can check. So if exists, then we do that. Then we save. So if it doesn't, if it exists, then we want to update it by doing save. Let me move this one in. Otherwise, we want to create it. So we can create by doing user preferences with objects with create. So we want to create for this user, of course. So user would be request with user. And then, of course, the currency will be the currency. Currency equals currency. Okay, so that should create it. And then we can tell you that the changes were saved come back to our HTML which is here we need to make sure that this select has a name so name would be currency so in the post and then the options we group them by giving them the same name and then each of these has to have a value so I'm going to set the value to be the same thing as what the user is seeing so right here actually I'm going to remove this selected one then I'm going to add value equals this dynamic content. So now if we come back, reload, and then choose a currency, let's say we choose, let's see, let's say we choose like Euro, and then save. Okay, so we have an issue. So the currency referenced before assignment, let's come back to our view. So that should be, Okay, so right here, you see we are trying to create even before we, we, we define it. So this should actually be outside the if. Okay, so let's bring it here. Okay, so let's retry. So choose zero. Okay, I'm going to use CDF. Then click save. 
so we have an issue so right here you see the view returned didn't return a valid response and that's because whenever we save we are not we are just saying show the message but we are not actually returning like an html template so right here i'm going to return the same template we are on so let's render and now we are going to render what the current template okay so we try then you see changes saved let's choose another one let's say we choose exaf save okay so right here we have an issue see that now in our in our checks in our view right here in our view right here we can now do we can now see okay so this is the issue exists is true meaning if it exists then the user preferences will now be set to the previous ones okay so once that is there now in our in our new exists we should be able to save it like this so i'm going to add this one to an else so else Okay, so then this should be running an else. And also I want to add a debug to make sure we are having a good we are having a good track of our exists. So PDB here. Okay, so we have an indent issue. Okay, so let's try it. Okay, so now when you click there, you can now check exists. You can see that it's true. Okay, so meaning this part should also be running. So I'm going to add a PDB here. Okay, so rerun. We already know that it exists, so continue. Okay, so let's retry. So this is a gate and this is running in a post. Okay, so do a C. Okay, so let me clear out the, the let me clear out the debugs. But we already know that for the current user, they already have an, an a record. Okay, so reload. Try to save currency data access before assignment okay sorry about that so let's look at it okay so you see when we are re rendering back we are passing currency data and that's because we defined it in the gate so we need to move it actually outside the gate which is should be here but then we want to move everything here. Okay, so this should now come to, this should now come here. Actually, let me put it on top. Okay, then we need to tab it over a bit, tab it back a bit. Okay, so that's back. So now if we come back to the app and then choose one like Audi, then save to have a PDB running. Try again. So you see we get no response and that's because if you come back here, here in save, we need to add this outside the else. So right here. So this should run when we create and also when we save. And of course this one now is running in the Let's see. Okay, so that's fine. That should do. So reload, choose a currency, save, and you see we get saved. Choose another one, save, and then you see we get saved. So now our last part is how do we persist it? So that when we save, it keeps selected, and then when we come back around, like we reload, it keeps selected. So for us to do that, we are going to get, we are going to be, for us to do that, 
we are going to be passing the user preferences which now will be here so instead of passing only currency data we are going to also pass the preferences then of course they will equal to the preferences okay so same thing even on the gate okay so now in our in our html which should be here see where we have the selected so this is where we want to look for the selected one so right here i'm going to do an if to see if we have the selected one so if i want to do dot currency so if we have a currency then we are going to show it and if okay okay so i'm going to move this one in inside the if statement so right here now i can bring back the i can now replace this with our what with our currency okay so it should also have the na same name actually so the same name will be currency so that when a user just saves we can just save that one okay so this should actually be in template literals just so it's dynamic don't forget that okay so you can actually set it as the value too just to make sure that the user may update they update it there and then without changing it. So if we come and reload, our server got disconnected. Let's look at it, where is it? Okay, so coming back to the app, you can see that AZ is selected. So if you select like BBD, let's save it. You can see that it's persisted. Let's select a USD. USD which is USD save it you can see that it's persisted if we reload you can see that the USSD is persisted I'm going to add the preference name here just so a user can know what exactly they are looking at so just here in the index I'm going to come and right here on top add an h5 and say preferred currency and preferred okay okay so now if we reload you can see that we have preferred currency i'm going to need to move it in the container just so it picks up our style reload it okay so now you can see we can pass from json file we can save and then retrieve it here so yeah so this is going to do it for the video if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up like and subscribe and then i'll see you in the next one